What is up, everybody? This is John with Archerfish. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for watching, subscribing, commenting, liking, all that stuff. <clears throat> this video is specifically for someone who asked for it. So if you comment in the in the videos and there's a certain uh, video that you want to see, a topic you want me to discuss, I will... Uh, I'll try to make a video on it uh, if it does, uh, if it is something that interests me or engages me or something that I know something about or whatever. And also, I'm going to add a couple of these little links. I think it's this side. Maybe it's this side. Either way, those little links up there, you click on them. What I try to do is put them, the ones that are relevant to the topic I'm talking about, because, you know, I've made a lot of videos at this point and a lot of the videos do address some of these things. I know. You know, sometimes new people watching the videos or whatever, they don't want to go back through all of my videos to watch everything. So I try to put the ones that are relevant to the topic, to the discussion up here or up here. I forget which side it is. But anyway, yeah, so click on those links because I am definitely going to do that for this one. <laughs> question was how to catch bass um, in the wintertime at Castaic and lakes like that in Southern California. And, uh, you know, I think it's been pretty tough as far as the big lake goes. The lagoon has been very popular, um, and I think people are catching fish there, um, you know, because it's a completely different water system there, completely different uh, situation. You know, I'm not water system, but um, environment and ecosystem, I guess. You know, there's tons of weeds in there. It's just a completely different sort of makeup than the big lake. It's not as deep, obviously. So it's been very, very crowded down there. And especially with all the uh, debris and stuff at the big lake uh, and all the wind up there, it makes it much harder to fish at the big lake than it does the small lake. So it's been very busy lately. Um, and I do have some more to add to that in the next video um, about people catching bass and 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 uh, uh, keeping bass and also not fizzing their fish so there's dead fish floating and same with crappie and stuff like that and uh, yeah I got some uh, some points about that to add but anyway this video is about catching the bass so whether you're fishing the lagoon or the big lake these are some tactics that you can do uh, when it's cold outside or this time of the year you know before the spawn um, when the fish are deeper, you know, anywhere from 30 to 40 feet deep, sometimes a little deeper. It depends, you know, where they're hanging out. And like I said, I've made videos like this before. So real quick, if you want to catch bass this time of year and you just want to catch bass, you're not, you know, hunting for trophy bass or whatever. Because if you're hunting for trophy bass, you know, throwing big trout imitation swim baits is the way to go. Just get out there. They just stocked bass at the big lake a few days ago. So if you can get out there, you know, and fish around the marina area, you know, uh, there's a good chance you'll catch a, a big bass or even a big striper. Um, but you got to put in the time. You got to put in the effort. I mean, I I threw the, the big bass or the big swim baits for hours and hours and hours and hours. And, and I had followers and stuff like that, but never once did I have a bite. Uh, and so it, it takes time. So if you want to do that, cool. There's a good chance you might catch a striper or maybe a big bass. But if you just want to catch a fish, these are uh, I'll give you three ways to catch them right now. Okay, what you want to do is have a 2,500 size reel, um, you know, a kind of medium to medium light size rod. Um, I'll put some links in the description of some inexpensive choices um, and the ones that work that I like that I've been fishing with for years. Um, and you want light line. Um, this type of year, this time of year, typically the water is very clear. And so, um, because all of this, the, aside from the debris that is blown in and stuff like that, because of the rain, um, the, the debris that's in the water, you know, the biomass and stuff like that, um, it, it sinks down. Okay. Uh, and when the water starts to warm up, it comes back up. If you fish there in, in spring and summer, especially you've seen all those clumps of stuff all over there. And that's actually such a great sign because that is the, you know, the, the biomass from the bottom coming up, they call it the lake turning over. And the shad follow that stuff up because they eat it. And then all the other fish follow that stuff up too. And it's just a great sign for the lake. So right now, all that stuff is deep. So the water is extra clear. Um, you know, and so also what you want to do is have light line. I use fluorocarbon. Um, eight pound, six pound, uh, six pound, maybe even go with six pound right now. 
um, because the clearer the water is, uh, the more finicky the bass are, especially the bigger bass. So the lighter line, the better. So if you got six pound tests on 2,500 size reel, a medium light or even a light size rod, you know, I still like six foot six and over, um, you know, and these are spinning setups. Uh, and make sure your drag is set nice and loose because with six pound tests, any decent sized bass snatches it or gets you wrapped around a little plant or something like that and it's gone. So make sure your drag is nice, is set nice and loose, but not too loose that the bass doesn't get hooked. Um, I like to use little size four or less size six mosquito hooks, the owners, um, and, and rig your lineup with a drop shot. Um, I've got videos of drop shot setups, you know, give yourself, you know, uh, it depends, maybe a foot and a half, maybe, a, yeah, maybe a foot and a half is kind of where I like to go as far as the weight at the bottom. I just buy those little cheap uh, water gremlins from Walmart, it's like 83 cents for a bag. Um, <clears throat> it depends on how far you want to cast out. Um, I like an, an eighth of an ounce, I guess, sometimes a quarter of an ounce, not too heavy. Um, and I just tie it on there. So sometimes that gets snagged and kind of pop it off. And the hook, of course, about a foot and a half, a foot up. Um, and right now, I, I would I would suggest using smaller baits. Um, I like the Morning Dawn Robo Worm, um, mostly in the summertime. That's kind of my go-to. So right now, maybe a shad color. And what you want to do is if you're working the shore, um, you know, just cast out uh, and just work the whole shore, you know. I don't know what the levels are like right now. I know they let water in. Um, but just, you know, just throw that sucker out and and just give it some time. You know, the, the bass are moving slower, so, you know, it's it's you, it's going to be a little bit, you know, few and far between on bites, but you'll you'll catch them. So uh, that is one way to do it. You know, using the drop shots, very effective. Just cover a lot of ground, you know, hit one place for a little while. You know, if it's a nice point, you can probably stay there and, and hopefully bass will come to you. But this time of year, you know, I don't think they're moving around all that much. So just you know, fish a spot for 10, 20 minutes and head to the next spot and head to the next spot and and also cast out pretty far. There's decent drop-offs everywhere. So cast out far, you know, and kind of slowly bring it back to you. Just, you know, very, very slowly. You don't want a lot of movement, just enough to make the worm wiggle and slowly bring it back to you. And then just keep doing that, you know, and cover a lot of space. If you're in a boat, same thing, you know, look for points. Okay, good fish. Off this point again. And he's actually quite thin. Bluffs, drop-offs, you know, anything like that. Any any sort of difference in the structure where you think the bass may be staging. And, uh, you know, just give it some time there. And, and just, you know, uh, throw those things and, and give it some time. I like to work coves, you know, uh, the kind of the deeper sides of the coves. Uh, near the mouth of the cove or if there's a point there that leads into the cove. I like to... Hit that little corner there. These bigger points like this, with a lot of incoming uh, water and wind. This is a little dirty, which is okay. I prefer like nice clean water though. It, feels, it seems like the fish prefer it. And I'm just kind of dragging it. See where the dirty water meets the clean water. So I'm just kind of right on the edge with the bait, drop shot, and dragging it into here. So that is one one thing that is, is pretty successful this time of year. Uh, and remember, the lighter the line, the better for that. The second thing is I like to use just a little tube bait. You know, there's like ghost shad, the, the lighter colors I feel like the better, um, but as long as it's not standing out too much in the water, because remember the water is very clear. So there was a smoke color that I had, uh, I cannot find them anymore, but a little smoke color, like a little grayish thing seems to work well. Um, stuff that looks like it's, you know, swimming around in there. And again, very light line, uh, four or six pound test. I wouldn't go heavier than that because you can cast the tiny little tube baits really far. Um, I use the Berkeley as well. Um, and yeah, that just, it looks good in the water, the way it floats down. And, you know, bass will come up for that and, you know, hit, go it around a uh, structure that you see if there's any sticks sticking out or around points and stuff like that. And just, you know, same with the drop shot, except, it's a little faster of a bait. Just make sure you let it sink to the bottom and give it a little, it's kind of like a jerk bait, you know, the little tube bait. So you let it sink, pop, pop, let it sink some more, pop, pop, let it sink and go all the way, you know, and again, cover, cover water. Um, and again, if you're in a boat, places that look fishy, you know, points, stuff like that. But remember, 
you know, these fish are deep. So the little tube baits, you know, it's mostly for shallow water. You know, if you're fishing from a boat towards shore, you know, hit, I'll go all the way to shore and, and do that and pop it back. Uh, if there is any sort of dirty water, like uh, if there's some boats in the water or some wind or waves, and maybe there's a little corner that, you know, the dirt has come down in the water and made it a little bit, you know, dirtier, you know, throw that little tube bait in there. I know there's a couple spots from shore when you, the first parking lot that's really up high on like, before you go down to the main parking lot, park up there and hike down. Um, and there's just a whole bunch of stuff to your right, all these little coves and stuff that, when they're submerged with water, there's just a great spot for fish. So uh, try that area as well. So we got the drop shot with very light line. The tube bait also very light line. I wouldn't go under four pounds and I would not go over six pounds, honestly. Um, <clears throat> and so use those two. And then the third one uh, would be a jig head with, uh, you know, like a little Kitek and the smaller the better, the two and a half inch or, you know, and the electric shad is what I like. You know, I put that in one of my uh, recent videos too. And, you know, again, with that one, you can throw it pretty far and let it sink all the way. And, and once you feel it hit the bottom, you know, pop it up, pop it up, stuff like that, and try different retrieves. Try this slow, just popping it up every once in a while. You know, try using it like a jerk bait real fast. You know, whatever it takes to, to, to get a bite. And again, cover lots of water. You know, try around the marina, try to the right side of the marina and go down that shoreline and just keep working those places. So for me, in the wintertime, if I was out there, those are the things I would be trying. I would throw a Senko once in a while just to see what's going on. But I think most of those fish are deep and it's, you know, and not really moving a whole lot. So give that a shot. And I'm talking specifically the big lake. Like I said, I know the, the, the lower lake, those techniques work as well. So you know, you can use those fishing from shore as well. So those will be my favorite techniques. I mean, there's also jigs and things like that, um, but they, you know, I just feel like the, the easiest way to catch bass would be the, the three techniques that I said. So that is for the guy that commented, I forgot your name, but there you go. There's a video on how to catch fish right now, Castaic in Southern California. Thanks for watching everybody. I'll see you tomorrow.